the modern man is trapped in his own self-belief. Everything he perceives himself as is bad. But it's true. What he perceives himself is what he will become, so he becomes bad. He fails in every aspect of his life. The caveman. The caveman stands up in the morning. He jolts out of bed with a lightning strike. He is full of energy. All the women love him. He looks so beautiful that even the men lust over him. He lives a life of courage and of bravery. He loves every second of his life and he loves himself. He also makes everything become truer of what he thinks about himself. But he perceives himself as a leader, not as a follower. He perceives himself as the best man alive after Jesus, of course. He believes in the Lord and he believes that that God will save him. The difference between the two men is just you're doing the bad habits because you feel you're not worth of doing the good ones. You're not a loser because you jerk off seven times a day. You jerk off seven times a day because you're a loser. Your identity is everything. And in this video, we're going to be joining two weeks of last that is completely free that you don't need to subscribe anything for that. I don't need your email address for so don't click away. Watch the whole video in order for you and put it in order for a reason. This two-week plan is going to be structured in the following way. You're going to do everything that, that you do in your day. Every single habit, every single step you take is going to be for your future self. Just imagine yourself in your gratitude journal to write down, I am grateful for having done this because you've actually done it for your future self. For the next two weeks, I want you to do everything that you do for your tomorrow self. And just ask yourself, what would my tomorrow self want me to do? If you had control over the things your yesterday self does or says, or eats, or sleeps, or drinks, or whatever. If you had control over that, what would you make him do? And do exactly that today. And do that for two weeks, for just two weeks. And then you also journal on why you feel you're not worth of the good things. So that's what you're doing today. And for the next two weeks, you're on this plan that I told you, but it's very fundamental to this, that you say, okay, this is why I feel bad. I got bullied, whatever. And don't just write this down, don't just write, I got bullied, write the exact experience because there's always one moment of realization where you learned, okay, I'm not worth anything. When people say something to you long enough and often enough, you will at some point believe it about yourself. If I tell you every single day, you're the fucking man, you can get out of bed, you can be disciplined, you can be a great man. Trust me, I've done this myself. I was the worst scum on the fucking world. And if you are this, and if I just stand beside you all fucking day long and I tell you, you're meant to conquer, you're meant to be disciplined, you're meant to be great, you're meant to be a son of God, you are a legend, you are a good man. If I stand beside you and tell you this every single day for every single second of your life, you're going to become that. But if I tell you, you're a piece of shit, you're poor, you're fat, you're lazy, you're weak, you're undisciplined, you're a bitch. If I tell you this every single day, it is going to happen. Why do fighters before fights trash talk each other? Because they want each other to believe the lies they tell the, the, their opponent. They want him to think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe he's right, maybe I'm not the fucking man. Boom! in their face they think about oh this guy said oh, i'm i'm a loser <laughs> the pow, right he just get beaten in the face because he wasn't mindful because he was thinking about that because he was belittled by his opponent and he believed it and this is exactly what happens to you when you're bullied 
So write the one moment where you thought, okay, yeah, maybe they're right. Write that one moment, write the worst moment in your bullying journey, in your bullying journey down. And simply write about that in as much detail as you can. And now I want to talk about frame, which is ultimately the reason why we're doing all of this. Because you see, when you see yourself as weak, as I just talked about with the analogy of the fighters, the fighter who perceives himself as weak and as timid, he will not walk around like this. He will not be confident. He will not be, he will not be present. He will not be mindful during the fight. He perceives himself as weak and therefore he's hunched over. He's unconfident, right? His fighting style is kind of defensive. He's, had it, he's having his head back, right? He has already lost. And this is the same thing what happens to you. You think to yourself, I'm a bitch. I'm not worth of doing the good habit. I'm not worth of having open body language. And subconsciously, when you think that you're weak, you're giving off this sign to other people. And they cannot help but judge you. Because evolutionary, it's been set this way because body language and reading body language is the quickest shortcut to reading how someone lives. Instead of walking over to you and asking you, do you do the good habits? Do you go to the gym? Do you go to the church? Do you believe in God? I can simply just look at your hunched over little bitch body posture and your body language and your unconfident talking skills. And I can see he's probably going to have an erection problem. He's probably going to jerk off eight times a day. He's sitting there like this. I'm going to do something now for you. And I want you to really read my body language and really don't think of the way that you usually think of me. And for just a moment, when I talk like this, just by the way of how my neck is structured, I'm going to have a, like, a, 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 a higher pitched voice. And, um, yeah, I'm going to get a posture damage from this if I do this for long enough. And, you know, but now if I talk like this, if I talk open, if I talk with confidence, because you see, I'm, when, when I'm talking to the camera in the woods, I'm talking to my younger self. I'm talking to young Jacob. I'm talking to, to, to literally my younger self. I envision, before I record, I envision my younger self sitting with a chair right in front of me. And I think I'm greater than my younger self. This is why I have so good body language on camera. This is why I'm open, because I think I am greater than younger Jacob. So... As a conclusion to this whole body language and frame thing is that the way you think you are is going to be right in your life when thinking about how you are and who you are. If you stick to that belief about yourself for long enough, it is going to be true. Because if you perceive yourself as a loser, you're going to have the hunch over body posture and other people are going to use that as a shortcut to determine, yes, this guy is a loser. But if you're having the open body language, if you're courageous, if you're having confidence and have that body language and show that, then people are going to think, okay, yeah, this guy is a fucking man. He is pounding his, he's pounding his wife. He's pounding his girlfriend, whatever. He has a hard dig, right? And, <laughs> and this is very, very, very like weird to say, but in, a, but in a weird way in your head, it makes sense. Who do you think is more likely to have an erection problem or a discharge? The confident entrepreneur, millionaire who's fit, who's training every single day, or the weak little, little scumbag, the NPC who's sitting in his room all day? Of course it's the guy in his room. Of course it's the guy who is hunched over, who is unconfident. Of course it's not the guy who's chatting with all the women. Of course it's not that man. You perceive himself as low and therefore you treat him as low. And therefore what he thought about himself, which led him to be behave in that way, is going to be true. Just have this, this phrase in your mind always, what I think about myself is always going to be true. I am never going to make a mistake. I'm never going to be false in the way I perceive myself. 
and those two week plan and that two week plan that I put you on right in the beginning of this video to even catch the people with the shortest attention span of you, that plan will help you and live in and improve that version that you think you are. And I want you to see this two week thing as a gift. It takes discipline, it takes balls, because you've never been told to do this. You've always been told, oh, go to the gym, do, do squats and heavy deadlifts, and, and then you will be more heavy, because then you, 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 you're having a difficult workout, and, and shut up, shut up, please, shut the fuck up. Shh, I'm speaking, the master is speaking. <laughs> no, I'm not the master, God is the master. Jesus Christ in heaven, the only God, the only real God. Jesus Christ, he is the only master. He's the only God alive. He is the master. I'm merely a student of him and I, and I just want you to accept this thing that I'm putting you on as a gift. Discipline is something high value people do. You need to just envision this. At the beginning, discipline will suck, but you need to think discipline is something high value men do. Every single time, you think about quitting, you just say, no, we are disciplined. Us on self-improvement, we are the most disciplined, most hungry, success needing men out there. We will destroy everyone and anyone in our paths who wants to keep us from our goals. God is with us. We aren't undisciplined on self-improvement. We will be more disciplined than them. We will prevail. We will fight harder than them, longer than them, and better than them because we are disciplined. High value men are disciplined. You need to value yourself to be disciplined. If you don't value yourself, why invest pain and time and effort into something that you don't even value? You're not gonna see a business model that you think is bullshit, like drop shipping, for example. I think drop shipping is bullshit, I'm sorry, but I just think it's a very purposeless thing to do. I'm not going to invest pain into that if I don't see that it's worth it, that it's valuable. Look at my YouTube channel. I have 148 subscribers and 240 videos. I clearly value this because I want to put this, I want this to work so desperately that the objective has changed from becoming rich through this YouTube channel to becoming rich so I can do the YouTube thing. I'm going to be engaging in side hustles or whatever. And, and be very disciplined and put so much work into this channel because I think it's worth it. And you need to find the same mentality with yourself. You'll never be disciplined unless you value yourself. So see discipline as something valuable. If you're a businessman or, or if you've read the book Personal MBA, um, you will know hassle premium. And hassle premium is this term and this special... Spe fuck. How do you say that word? Spec <laughs> Specification. <laughs> that everything that is hard has value because it's if, if there is something hard to do, if there is a diamond hidden in a, ca in a cave that is 50 feet below surface, that diamond is going to be worth more than a rock on the floor because it's harder to get. Hassle premium is basically... The saying that if it is hard to do, if it's hard to get, it is valued. Write in the comments right now one thing that is hard to do and hard to get that is not valued in society at all. Write one thing and I will do a hundred push-ups, a hundred push-ups on camera and upload it for every single comment that I think is true or that can be negotiated as true. I challenge you, do it right now. I hope that you do it. I hope, I really hope because I'm excited to do 100 push-ups. Please, please prove me wrong. I'm waiting. Everything that is hard is valuable. Like your dick. So now, have a nice day. Do the things that I told you today. Implement them into your life. May the Lord be with you. May the God of the heavens and of the earth be in your heart always. I wish you all the best. Master your mind.